looking at a large data set doesn't help getting any information, while visualizing your geographic data on a 3D map gives you insights at a glance and allows you to tell the story behind the numbers and make a better informed business decision. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you how to plot your data on a 3D map, walk your audience through your findings, and convert the map to an exciting video to share with clients and colleagues. So let's dive in. Here is my start file. You can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below this video. In this worksheet, I have a table which shows transactional records. I have a date, a product, a category, units and the retail price, a manager name, a province and a region. I would like to get insights about my data geographically and compare the revenue generated by each province. I might want to dig even deeper and look at the sales for some of the categories and maybe look at the revenue generated by some of the managers. And the best way to do that is to represent my data and plot it on a globe on a 3D map. In preparation for creating my 3D map, I would like to create a pivot table that shows the revenue generated by each province. And to do that, I'm going to click on the Insert tab of the ribbon, and to the left side, I click on Pivot Table. And in the Pivot Table wizard, I would like to create my pivot table in a new worksheet, but I would like also to add my table to the data model. Note the name of the table is product T, product table. Check the box for add this data to data model, and then I hit OK. And when I hit OK, here is my new worksheet. I start by dragging the state or province to the rows. I get a unique list of provinces, and I would like to calculate the revenue. The revenue is not available in the source table. It's calculated by multiplying the units by the retail price and then adding all the numbers together. And because I added my table to the data model, I can go to the Power Pivot tab. And on the Power Pivot tab, I click on New Measure under Measures. And I'll be creating a measure to do that. And I'll be naming this measure Revenue. And for the revenue, I'll be using a SUMX function. I hit the Tab key. And it requires the name of the table. It's the only table I have. It will live in the product table. Then I type product and then I hit tab. And then comma. I would like to multiply the units. I open a square bracket and select the units. And I want to multiply it by the retail price. I open another square bracket. I select the retail price. I hit tab and I close the bracket for the sum x function. I can check my formula for errors and I don't have any errors. I want to format it as currency and then I hit OK. The measure is created and it's added to my pivot table. If you want to change the layout of the pivot table to bring the label here at the top, you go to the design tab, click on report layout and let's change it to tabular form. Now I have state or province. I start by creating my 3D map by selecting any single cell in my pivot table. I go to the Insert tab of the ribbon and then I click on 3D map. When I click on Open 3D map, it will open on top of Excel. I see the picture of a globe. I have a field list. I have a layer pane and I have a tour editor. I can close the tour editor for now. And if I want to bring it back, I can do that by clicking on Tour Editor. It's a toggle button, so if I click on it one more time, it will be hidden. On the right hand side, let's have a look at the layers. I have one single layer for now. This is layer number one. I can edit the name of the layer if I want by clicking on this little icon. I'll keep it as it is. And for the location, because I'll be plotting on a map, it recognizes two fields as location, the region and the state or province. And I'll be using the state or province. Then I want to delete the region. I click on the deletion symbol and I have the state or province. I have the confidence margin here, which shows 30%, which is not too high. I'm going to click and see what it's interpreting. When I click here, it almost recognized all of them correctly. Newfoundland corresponds to Newfoundland and Labrador. All the other provinces are correct. Then 
I'm not going to worry about the percentage, the 30%, and I hit OK. So for the location, I'll be using the province. What about the height? For the height, I'll be using the revenue that I just calculated, and I drag it and drop it exactly like in a pivot table. I drag the revenue to the height, and because I want to see each province in a different color, then I'm going to drag the state or province to the category as well. I drag the state or province. Now I see the different provinces. I see a legend for layer one, and that's wonderful. Let's improve the appearance and look at some details. I can resize my legend. I can rotate this globe by using the arrows to the lower right corner. Then I'm going to rotate the globe. I can move it up and down by dragging. I can zoom in and zoom out by clicking on the plus sign. Then I'll be using these buttons to adjust and rotate my globe the way I want until I see the revenue represented by a column for each one of the provinces. And because it's difficult to recognize which column corresponds to which province, then I'm going to add some map labels. If I click on map labels, some labels are added here at the top. I can zoom in even more. I can close the field list by clicking on the close button, or I can click on the field list to hide it. If you want to make more room, you can also hide the layer pane by clicking on this option. I also want to see the changes in the revenue over time. Then I'm going to drag a time field to this box. When I click on add field, then I'll be selecting the date, which is the only field. And I can change the date in second, in minute, in hour. I'll make it in quarters. Automatically, when I do that, I see a timeline added to the lower part of my window and the date and time box added to the upper left corner. I can click on the play button to see the changes over time, but let's close the field list first. I'm going to click on the play button to see the changes over time every quarter. I also want to fine-tune the layer options. I'm not going to add a filter right now. So I click on layer option and I want to increase the height of my columns. I drag it up. I want to increase the thickness. Then I drag this slider a little bit to the right. You can change the shape instead of having it as a square. I have a shapes option and I can make it like a circle. When I click on circle, that looks a little better. You can change the color if you want for any one of the columns by clicking on the down arrow for color and select from the color palette whichever color you want. I'm going to keep it the way it is for now and I finished creating my first scene. I want to display the tour editor pane one more time because I'll be creating two other scenes. This scene represents the revenue for each province. I can add a text box to demonstrate this. I click on text box and I'll be typing overall revenue. I can bold it if I want and I'll be adding a description total revenue by province. I hit create and here is my text box. I can move it to the upper right. I can resize it in any way I want. Let's bring the tour pane by clicking on tour editor and I'm going to copy this scene by clicking on new scene. For the new scene, I'm going to make some modifications. I'll be adding a filter for the category and I'll be adding a filter for the provinces. I just want to look at the dairy category in the central region and the Atlantic region. And to do that, in the layer pane, I want to add a filter. Then I expand filter. I click on add filter. I'll be adding the region. And here I select only the central region and the Atlantic region. I can collapse the region and I'll be adding another filter, let's say for the category. And I just want to look at the dairy category in these two regions. Now I can see a representation of the revenue of the dairy category in the central and the Atlantic region. Then let's modify the text box. I'll make it revenue from dairy product. And I type Central and Atlantic Regions. I hit OK. I can resize my text box. 
and that's fine. I can even rotate my globe to focus on the Central and Atlantic regions. We can also remove the date from time by clicking on the deletion symbol. And here, I don't want to see the changes over time. I'm looking at the overall revenue generated from the dairy products. I want to create another scene. Then I select the first one. I click on New Scene. I move it down. And here, I want to look at the revenue generated by some of the managers. Then I need to add the managers to the filter. I expand the filter. I click on Add Filter. I select Manager. I would like to look at some of the managers. I will be looking at Daniel and let's say George. This is the revenue generated by Daniel and George. And to differentiate them, I'm going to remove the time. And instead of having each province in a different color, I'm going to remove the category. And I'll be adding the manager to the category. Then I click on the plus sign. I add the manager. Now I have two colors. The blue color represents the sales for Danielle and the orange color represents the sales for George. I'm resizing the legend. Now let's change the label. I double click on the text box and here I'll be changing the title, comparing revenue, Danielle and George. I hit OK. And now anyone looking at this scene will understand that it's a comparison between the revenue generated by Daniel and the revenue generated by George. If you want to represent your data on a flat map, you can do that by clicking on flat map. It becomes a flat map. I prefer the globe Then I'm going to click one more time. Now to make it dynamic, I'm going to generate a video from these scenes. I select the first scene. And I want to change the scene options. I click on scene options. And here I can give a name to the scene. I'm not going to do that. I'll be adding a transition effect. Let's make it circle. And I can specify a time frame if I want. I go to the second one. I want to specify an effect. So let's say for this one, I'll make it push in. And for the third one, I'm going to change it as well. And I'm going to change the transition effect and let's make it rotate globe. Let's explore how it looks like. I'm going to close the scene option and let's explore how it looks like by clicking on play tour. So this is our tour, how it looks like. This is the first scene and the changes by quarter in the revenue. And then I move to the second scene where I can compare the revenue of the dairy products between the central and the Atlantic regions. And then I move to the third scene where I'm comparing the revenue between Daniel and George. I'm going to hit escape. I would like to convert this tour into a video. I do that by clicking on create video. It asks me about the output. I want it for computers and tablets. That's a lower resolution. I want to add a soundtrack and I browse for a soundtrack. I added a soundtrack and then I'm going to hit apply to create the video. Where do you want to save this video? Let's say I want to save it to my videos folder with the name tour one. I hit save. It might take a little while according to the amount of details you have, so please be patient. So the video is created and saved. If you want to open it and have a look, click on open. switches from one scene to the other scene. Now I'm comparing the revenue between Daniel and George. And when I'm done, 
I'm going to hit escape. So the concept is simple. You can keep adding scenes, customizing each scene the way you want, and then you create a video tour for the entire story that lies behind the numbers. If you want to take a screenshot of your data, you can do that as well. I'm going to close the layer pane. I'm going to close the tour pane, and I'm going to take a screenshot to use it inside my Excel file. I click on Capture Screen, and I would have taken a screenshot that I can share in any application or even in an email. So if I close the tour, now I'm back to Excel. I can paste the picture here by going to the Home tab and click on Paste. And here is a static picture of my findings. If you enjoyed this training video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel to be notified when new tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.